everyone this is aditya you know uh, if you are new to my channel if you haven't subscribed please hit the subscribe button for more some content regarding the real estate investing and realtor journey so today i am here with my good friend who is an investor and flipper in detroit so we are actually in detroit so you are in treat if you are looking for detroit investing in detroit or flipping properties in detroit then you're in treat because you're here with an expert who is doing that who have done bunch of deals and he going to show us different properties he going to show his property that he is working and he going to show his property that he already finished the work so you're here in treat so let's get to know savio and we will drive around to show you guys hey savio thank you very much for giving your thank time thank you thank you for having me on the show aditya thank you for uh, putting out this great content for everybody because i think what you do is something special you know for everybody who wants to get into real estate investing who already maybe are into real estate investing mm -hmm. you know information is power right yeah. so thank you so much for that and having me on here Hopefully, uh, we'll show you something good about Detroit today. Uh, I know there's a lot of fears about investing in Detroit, yep. but if you're into making money like I am, this is the place to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why I always like uh, in my mind like I always saw some future because there is there is always a saying that in real estate you have to buy when it's low and you have to sell when it's high. So now Detroit is in a position where it's in the low, right? Absolutely. So um, you know, before we get too much details into it, can you just give us a little brief idea about who you are and what you do, and you know? Uh, sure. Okay. So uh, my name is Sabio. As uh, Aditya introduced me, uh, you can find me. Uh, I'm, I'm usually known on in Canadian soil as Real Estate Investor Sav. That's my uh, my uh, go-to sign if you look me up. And then in Detroit, I'm known as uh, Canadian Flip Detroit. Because uh, there's not a lot of Canadians out here in Detroit, so that's how people know me. He's the Canadian guy flipping Detroit. Yeah. Um, so I got here. I would say I started flipping in 2017 in Detroit, only because of the prices, right? Um, as you know, in Canada, it's very expensive to yeah. purchase a home, put in rental costs, and then uh, try to make some money out of it in the shortest time possible. Um, you know, I was averaging buying homes in Canada for seven hundred fifty thousand dollars uh, <laughs> out of um, you know Oakville, where I was based off. Yeah. Uh, whereas in Detroit, and we look around here, we are buying homes for fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. Right. So there's a big difference over there, and that's really what drew me to Detroit, mm -hmm. um, and the fact that basically you can do it multiple times faster. Yeah. Right. So uh, so here we are. Awesome. So uh, how many deals ha have you done in Detroit so far? So uh, last year I did four flips. Oh wow! Yeah, um, I made in excess of uh, I would say hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Um, a lot of them were through joint ventures. Mm -hmm. So I gave my partners back. I would say about fifty percent of that. Awesome. This year, this year my goal is to do seven flips. Mm -hmm. But uh, after Aditya's show, maybe we'll do more, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely we will. And uh, you know, just just to give you guys an idea, we are here at a property. Actually, Savio just got a text from his uh, wholesaler that property, that beautiful house. Is for sale. Yep. So we're gonna we're gonna look around. We'll show you guys more about the location. We'll talk more. Let's jump in the car. Let's start. Okay. Okay. Houses. You know, you can see these beautiful uh, Victorian style uh, brownstone homes. Um, really beautiful architecture you know and uh, just to give you a comparison like if you were in downtown Toronto or if you were in Toronto buying any of these homes you know you would pay in excess of what a million dollars at the tier yeah uh, in Windsor at least uh, they are going for like nothing less than 700 this size homes there you go I mean look the two-door you can see a two-door style home you know brownstones again uh, Bagley district is a really up-and-coming district in Detroit um, after the recession a lot of these homes were left vacant by their owners because they couldn't afford the mortgage they didn't have jobs so they just left them and they you know they got them dilapidated and uh, from an investor point of view this is one area that we want to get into definitely uh, because of the price point the entry price point and the fact that the ARVs are so high here uh, and the reason for that is that you know the the type of people who live in Bagley are um, uh, I will say a little more than uh, than millennials, you know, so genera Generation X probably, um, all working 
usually I would think in the in the automotive industry in one of the big four uh, so their jobs are secure they've been in these companies for a long time some of them are even you know manager level and so on and so forth they can afford a mortgage right so a house typically over here you're buying uh, as an investor for for 50 between 50 and 60 thousand US you're renovating you're putting um, uh, another 40 maybe into it you know mm -hmm. so you're looking at total investment of a uh, under a hundred thousand or thereabouts and then you're selling you know ARV for about hundred and fifty thousand so really uh, you know after closing costs and whatnot you're making at least 35 between 35 and 40 thousand US dollars right that's just a pretty pretty good good trip um, and from a timing point of view mm -hmm. I think you know we try to get in and out in in two months to actually do the work mm -hmm. finish the rental work in two months but then of course you have to have closing time and so on and so forth so anywhere between four and six months you're flipping these houses look here you see how it's boarded up because this is just a vacant house oh, abandoned wow. house and it's boarded up so if we can get your hands on that you know that's a money maker right there yeah money maker right there. and how, how long does the property stay on the market like if you, once you're done with the renovations and if you want to sell uh, in the Bagley district, I would uh, I think the average dom or days on market is is um, twenty seven days something like that. Not bad actually. Not not bad, not bad at all. Yeah, and that's dropping fast in Detroit. Again, okay. it depends on where you are in the city. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some places last longer or stay longer. Mm -hmm. It depends on, of course, the season as well. Now we're coming into the spring season, so I would expect that number to drop really, really fast, really, you know, drastically. Yeah, true. And um, you know, one stigma that keeps many people away from Detroit is like you know the, the um, crime rate. Yeah. So what's what's your experience on that? Like, have you experienced any kind of crime because you have done a bunch of deals here? So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure, uh, crime is. Uh, I want to say this: it's everywhere you go. Uh, probably not the case, but. Uh, in in the four flips I did last year, um, I have to say that I got robbed three times. <laughs> so uh, you know, uh, but what I realized uh, is that at any time I don't feel like my life is threatened, right? Mm -hmm. There are robberies, yes, right, and it's a pain. Now it's become more of a pain in the butt than anything else because you have to you know replace the things that they've robbed, right? So these are mainly drug addicts or homeless people uh, who need a quick buck, right? So they're mm -hmm. coming in, they're taking out water furnace, uh, sorry, the furnace or the water tank, uh, they're taking it out sometimes in the copper piping, right? Uh, or maybe even the copper wire, because they can sell that for, for weight. But um, at no given time that I feel like my life was threatened by any, for any chance. Like these are good neighborhoods, right? Mm -hmm. Detroit. Of course, like any city, if you go into the bad neighborhood in the wrong time of the day, then you, you're bound to get into trouble, right? So we try and stay away from that. Um, I look at the areas a lot when I do the mm -hmm. evaluation. Uh, do you have any uh, like uh, specific neighborhoods that you would uh, uh, tell that to stay away from? Um, I, I won't say, you know, I don't like to talk too much negative things. So I'll <laughs> say areas that you should go to because that those are hot areas. Okay. Right? So Bagley District for sure is one of them. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, if you can get something in here, you should go for it. Okay. Uh, another place is Hazel Park. Hazel Park, Hazel okay. Park, Madison Heights. Mm -hmm. uh, Madison these are Heights. these are suburbs of, of Detroit where the ARVs are, are much higher than the, the the houses that you're getting from, right? So, yeah. so we're okay. actually pulling up to my property right now. Uh, on the right over here, you can see uh, one right next to us is boarded up, but we are in this brown two door that you're looking at right now. So, I got oh, this. Wow, I like I love the street actually. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a nice street for sure. Let me get my keys here. Gorgeous homes, as you can see. Really beautiful homes in Bagley, right? As I said, all these homes people are actually buying. You don't find too many. You find some renters for sure, but uh, people, you know, want the value of owning a home and home ownership. So, so.
What's the square foot of the size? This particular home is uh, 1,781 square feet. Wow. Um, not including the basement, which, which we will finish. Yeah. Wow. Look at the houses in the neighborhood. I love those. I love that red house. <laughs> Super cool. Yeah. So this one actually I got from a wholesaler. So I mm -hmm. get all my deals from wholesalers because Honestly, I don't have the time or energy to go and look for houses or bang on doors and, mm -hmm. and ask them. So wholesalers usually uh, get me the good deals. They know my criteria and that's what they do, right? So this was a, a bank repo, a, a repo um, that they got from the, directly from the bank. Mm -hmm. uh, as you can see, there were squatters here, so they had to evict the property, <laughs> the squatters <laughs> at one point, but uh, here we are. So a good, good security tip in uh, Detroit. I always put this on my doors. Okay, this is a special kind of screw, which you don't find at Home Depot or anywhere else. Um, with a special kind of bit that you can see here. So there's very few places that you can find that, and that that helps keep the, the to unlock it. Yeah. So you know you need the you need that if you don't have that, it's very hard to uh, to get in and out. I never saw this kind of locking system before. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You do you do everything you can to mitigate risk, right? So yeah. Okay, so here we are in Bagley. This is my Bagley property. You can you can see that the house is in a, in a really bad condition, but this is the way we love it, right? As investors, you want to take something that looks like crap and turn it into something beautiful. It yeah. smells money. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. That's right. It smells like money, right? Most people sell. It says it smells like shit, but for us, it smells like money. <laughs> but uh, yeah, come come into here. Um, these are old. I love this. In, in this kind of old homes, they have boiler systems, so you have these uh, radiators everywhere. And honestly, I love that. You know, in Europe, if you go today, most places, most houses still use this. It's so much more efficient. It's so much more uh, uh, provides so much more heat. I would say than uh, usually HVAC systems. So I, I think it's also so much more secure in Detroit. <laughs> yeah, probably. Probably it takes some talent to remove that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you can see here we wanted to cut it down the full. Uh, kitchen it was a really old kitchen and um, i took the whole thing apart because you're going to modernize this completely you know we changed all the plumbing in here it was all old galvanized so we went for uh, pex and pvc copper i'm actually opening up this whole uh, wall here that's why i'm taking it down to make double french doors that go into the dining room uh, try to make it open concept right so this whole frame is going to come down as well. So it's actually going to be opened up right up, right up to the back over there. Uh, we're going to have, so all this frame is going to come down actually up to that wall over there. So it's going to be really open into this kitchen nook over here. We're going to close off this entrance. So it's going to be full wall. This is where our stove is going to be. We're moving the door down a little bit. It's going to be our fridge, refrigerator here, countertop, right? So all granite countertop on both sides, sink here, dishwasher. We're going to put in an island, a waterfall island, where Aditya is standing right now. So it's going to be looking really, really sweet at the end of it. In fact, um, all this work is starting on Monday. So Monday mm -hmm. we're going to do drywall um, and close up whatever we need to close up. Because uh, the plumbing, had to do, we had to change our full plumbing, so it took a long, long time for that, right? So uh, can you talk a little bit about the numbers? Like how much did you purchase this property for? And, uh, sure. Uh, how much are you expecting to do? Yeah. Like how much so, to put so in? So this particular property, I paid uh, fifty-eight thousand US dollars, uh, including closing costs, everything, right? So including the wholesalers fee, everything fifty-eight thousand. Uh, I'm budgeted to put another fifty grand into it, so it'll be at one hundred and eight, let's say, and uh, ARV at this point is one hundred and fifty-five thousand. So I'll sell it for one hundred and fifty-five thousand. Uh, I put in one hundred and eight, you know, minus closing costs, whatever. I stand to make a lot. I would say minimum thirty thousand uh, US in that. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Let's go upstairs. Yeah. So what's your step? Oh. 
So, uh, Savio, yes. another quick question because I see a lot of work here, right? Yep. So, do you do the work yourself or do you find... Uh... <laughs> you don't want the house if I swing the hammer, yeah? <laughs> no way. <laughs> you don't want that kind of house. No, I don't do any of the work myself. I have no knowledge about uh, contracting or, you know, uh, trades. So, uh, definitely I outsource all my work, right? I yes. subcontract all my work um, through, through different parties. Yeah. Um, does that answer your question? Or? Yeah, um, um, but I'm, I'm just looking for a little bit more details. Like, um, so now it's Detroit. So yeah. obviously the big question pops in my mind. If the contractor, if he hires a labor for someone, is it secure for them to come and work here? And also, oh, gotcha. are they are safe to come here? Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I think contractors, you know, uh, not to say too bad, too much bad about them, but they're the same anywhere in the world, right? You're always going to have trouble with contractors, right? you got to go through the numbers. Uh, so one of the things I did right off the start when I started coming to Detroit is I went to every single meetup. Mm -hmm. I made contacts in the meetup groups and I can't tell you the, the benefits that come out of it, right? I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing in Detroit if I didn't meet the people that I met in the meetup groups and the networking, right? So. It doesn't matter if you're investing in Detroit or in Oakville or in Mississauga or in Windsor or in Sydney, Australia. It doesn't matter. You have to have the right network, right? Yep. And the only way you're going to have that is by going to networking events and talking to people and telling them what you want to do and asking for help and so on and so forth. So most of the contractors I use are referrals to other investors, right? Uh, when I did not have a contractor because they were so busy or whatever, I went and I sat in Home Depot. I went early in the morning at 6.30 in the morning with my coffee and I saw whoever was coming in there, right? Because the contractors who were coming early in the morning, those are the guys you want to deal with. They're the ones who have work to do. They are the ones who are up early and they're not, you know, yeah. too, too, too uh, shady. You know, I love so. that tip. I love that tip because yeah. it's, that's a so super valid tip because, man, who who going to wake up early? The people who have commitment. Exactly. I love that. That's it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I, I, I can't take full credit for that. I must say, I heard that on, I think, one of the bigger pockets mm -hmm. podcast. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, when I first heard it, I said, like, yeah, whatever. You know, you always mm -hmm. find a contractor through TGG or um, Craigslist in, in Detroit. But having gone through that process and finding the people who came through those ads, you know, it's contractors, right? It's yeah. touch and go. Uh, and then I said, no, let me try to actually put into practice what I learned in one of those podcasts yep. and it worked. Oh. So my, uh, for example, my electrician is a guy I met in Home Depot and he's the best electrician ever. Come to find out, he's actually working for the city of Detroit as an inspector. Oh, and he, wow. does, he does work on the side, like, you know, after his working hours or whatever. So, you know, always go through that. That's nice. Yeah, yeah definitely. You know, that's one thing that I, I see from many people is like, yeah, we, we hear, we, most of us right now, we are in a generation where we have all the information, how to find a good deal, how to find a good contractor. Yeah. Uh, we just have to take actions, right? That's the thing. You have the information. I think you said it uh, really well, Aditya. It's action. It's all about action. Right? Yeah. You can learn by books, but uh, you won't do anything unless you do get up and do something, right? So this was actually a four bedroom, uh, four bedroom, one and a half bathroom house. And after talking to my realtor and understanding what this market wanted in Bagley, it made sense actually to convert this into a three bedroom. So we took out this, which is supposed to be a bedroom, and we're converting it into a master ensuite, right? So that's the master, and you can see we've already um, stuck in the plumbing. So this is where our sink is going to be. On this side, at the back there, you can see this is our bathtub. You know, we have a toilet over there. Um, so, and we have the entrance that we have cut, cut out to the to the master uh, bedroom from there. This door is gonna go, obviously. And we're gonna seal this up. So, in fact, what's gonna happen is that you're gonna have a walk-in closet, a walk-through closet for his and hers, and this master bedroom, and then you go straight to the bathroom. Which nice. Is, uh, which is an additional fe feature and hopefully brings the value up. I, I still cannot believe that you can finish all this work in 50,000 in Detroit. Yep. Because if I want to do the same project, flip project in Windsor, I might end up paying like eight, 70, 80 at least. Yep, yep. Uh, that's another thing for sure. So Detroit, when it comes to labor, um, the trades is much, much cheaper than I find in Windsor or anywhere in Ontario. Much cheaper, right? So, um, and plus you have, when it comes to materials, you have choice of materials too. It's not just Home Depot or Lowe's or Rona, you know. 
Corona, you know, we have so many different suppliers that you can get different quality, different price uh, type of materials, right? So for example, all these windows, I went directly to factory supplier, ABC supplier, right? So they're at least 30% cheaper than buying from uh, Home Depot, and it's the same quality window. So you've got to do your research on that, and once you get into the game of flipping in Detroit, and you talk to people, you'll find all these deals in, in different places for sure. Yeah, so go for the meetups, find, make friends with the people who are doing stuff. So now, are you going to show us the, the property that you finished? Yeah, absolutely. So this is uh, typically what we are buying and we started the work over here. Mm -hmm. You can see it looks like crap. Follow me on my uh, YouTube channel as well. Yeah. Uh, at Real Estate Investor Sav, Canadian, hashtag Canadian Flips Detroit. Uh, and you'll see the progress of this house, right? So um, in the next couple of months, we should be pretty much done in this house, right? We're going to move very, very quickly. And then we go to another place and uh, in fact, it's another neighborhood. In Detroit, so you'll see the differences in the types mm -hmm. of homes as well, and you'll see a finished property that we did there. Okay, awesome. Yeah, and don't worry, I'm gonna leave a link below for Savio's channel because definitely it will be super useful, especially if you're looking for investing in Detroit. Thank you very much, Savio. It's, it's been a, a pleasure to see all the streets and a pleasure. Thank you very much for showing your you. property that you're currently renovating. But I re realized that. Uh, this walkthrough will take too long, so that's why um, I'm planning. We are planning to do second part for next uh, finished property and the streets over there, and we'll talk more about Detroit in the part two. So check out for the second part in next week, and thank you very much for watching. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, and you know, for anything about Detroit, here you go. You know where to go, where to find the information. Thanks a lot. Yeah.